a really different daily drawing exercise subject today. It's one of the statues on the facade of Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Often called gargoyles, gargoyles, strictly speaking, are only the sculptures that have a water spout coming out of their mouth. These are more accurately called grotesques or shimmerers. But whatever they're called, I find this one a quite remarkably character-filled fellow. And so I thought it was a good challenge to try and capture his face, his features, his expression, his size, his proportions. As you can see, I'm not particularly trying to align his features real size on my drawing. I'm, I'm just going to let the drawing be whatever size it ends up being. I'm using a 0.3 millimeter pen because I thought the 0.2 just had too fine a line for the effect I wanted. I really want to get a sense of the weather beaten nature of the stone. So not being able to erase any lines, I really have to just go feature by feature and be really working hard on proportions and shapes. Although I'm looking hard to understand the three dimensions of this form, particularly in the shadows under the chin, in the end, I'm paying very careful attention to the shapes that are formed by the shadows and defined within various smaller sections of the face, of the head, of the neck, of the chest, and so forth. And I'm trying to put lines or hatching in place to replicate these same shapes. I'm trying to get the angles of things, such as the angle of that ear, as accurate as I can. All the time, of course, having to make little compromises because of inaccuracies that that slip into the drawing. But what I do do is wherever I can improve the accuracy further on, I do. And this shadow I'm doing now, I actually change that shadow line towards the end because I realized that not only was it not as accurate as it could have been, but that I was able easily enough to improve it. And by changing the shadow, I change the shape of the surface that the shadow is on and therefore made the neck and the chest area more accurate. Now, there's lots of weathered stone texture, so I'm trying to do just enough spots and, and little shadowed eroded parts to suggest that, but without going overboard. I don't want it to look spotty, but I do want it to look weathered. And partly because of this too, I'm being very careful with my outlines. Firstly, this is a form that's, that's moving around, away from us, so we're not looking at a hard edge. We're looking at a rounded surface that that becomes less and less visible until it disappears from sight. And so I, I do a lighter line for that, but I'm also aware that some of these eroded points are on the point of silhouette as well. And so I want to have some uh, broken lines to indicate that. You can see that I've put some ink on the reference photo just to try and define the actual edge that I'm trying to draw more carefully. Never be afraid to scrawl all over the reference photo in order to see more clearly what's happening. Sometimes I'll get one of my markers and I'll actually black out the part that I don't want to see so that I can see more clearly the part that I do want to see. Now you can see me here with this part that comes up over the rib cage. Just trying to work out the line. You'll see I didn't get that first line in the place I wanted it. And so I did it again to push that, that breastbone section of the rib cage out just a bit further. Always better to put the correct line in place. The brain will focus on that. I'm not worried about that other line. And then I'm having to work out where it 
comes along. But you'll notice I haven't worked at this point to define that lower part because what I want to do is get some of this shoulder in place and visualize some of the shapes in the center of the torso here, if you like, worked out. And then manipulate all of these shapes together to hopefully bring them together in the best proportion because this is a fantasy creature and so the legs are little because they're really only designed to sit in this one place. This isn't a creature that has to bound along on all fours or anything and so the proportions are a bit odd so I want to keep them as accurate as I can to the reference that I'm looking at. Now we have this ledge that the Shimmerer sits on and that the paw rests on. And so now this is the maybe one of the trickiest parts because I need to align the shoulder, the paw on the ledge, but also the paw in relation to the body and also the angle of the arm. I have to align all those things to create that sort of approximate triangular shape as well. And that's a fairly significant part of the overall visual appearance of this character. So I do want to go a bit slowly. You're watching this at double speed and then a quarter as fast again on top of the double speed. So that makes this somewhat less than, than three times as fast. It actually took me in real time about 25 minutes to draw, which was longer than I planned. But once I began to, to draw the figure, I enjoyed it so much, I must admit that I just slowed down and took more care and really had fun trying to get accuracy in the form and also to play with the texture and to just work out the shadows. I had thought this was going to be a rough drawing, a quick drawing, more of a cartoon shape, but it was a lot of fun. I do, I do remember looking at him at Notre Dame. Here I am now just redefining exactly that silhouette edge. And now I come to uh, a much harder and probably not quite as well done section of the drawing, which is this bracket under the ledge that the Shimura sits on. And these are really just fantastical decorative elements on the ends of these brackets. And yet somehow they give the appearance to me of the face of a dog with the ears over the top and the shadows where the eyes are and then uh, nice hanging jowls at the down below. But however, however we imagine it, then it becomes something to take just as much care in drawing as the main event. And I didn't do that. I was a bit distracted by the fact that I realized I'd gone much longer than I'd wanted to. And I hadn't even decided to draw this at all. When I began to draw, I really had thought I would just do the head and, and neck. And then I'd enjoyed that so much, I just thought, I'll just do a bit more of the shoulders. And before I knew it, I was at the ledge. So, so I hadn't sort of, I don't know, mentally prepared myself to do the bracket. And I think I just didn't put enough time into doing the very first rounded section, this one. That one's not large enough, it's not full enough, and it's not quite in the right place. And there wasn't much I could do to change it. I felt that I was better off just leaving it. And it's important when we do make a mistake or a line's not as accurate as we want it to be, to work out when we can massage it a bit or a lot or just redo it. And when we're better off just leaving it and working around it and doing our best to incorporate it as it is into a slightly modified form. And that's what I did for this section which meant it did take me longer because I had to slow down and work out how I would recreate the positioning of the other features with that ear of the dog, or, or not so much ear of the dog, but, but back, of the, back of the head section 
not quite in the right place. And then there was some more shadow here. And it's nice to have high contrast with the shadows and the shadow edges because that indicates bright sunny day, which is an important part, I think, of the overall um, life of this drawing, the energy of the scene, the drama that it gives and the way it highlights the creature's features even more than if it was a cloudier day and perhaps we could see more of it more clearly, I think it would be far less dramatic. So just finishing these shadows under here and then I'm done. Well, what a lot of unexpected fun. I hope you give this a go. You'll find the reference photo, of course, on my channel community page. Look, it is a challenging drawing. It is very challenging. And, and maybe you might just want to work on part of it. Just work on the face and see how you go. But I would suggest that you also try and create the effect of the weathered stone because that's an interesting part of what we're looking at. But look, whatever you draw and however you draw it, make sure you have fun. Mind you, I think it's very hard not to have fun with this really interesting fella. I'll see you next time. Bye.